Today we've got a nice geometry problem described by the following figure. So let's say we have a circle and then we draw a diameter on that circle and then a tangent to the circle where that diameter intersects the circle. Notice that means that this forms a right angle. And then furthermore, we'll mark two units up on that tangent line and then build a line segment from this tangent line back to the circle, giving us a length of three units down here and one unit down here and a right angle here. Okay, and then our goal is to find the radius of this circle. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to do is give some of these points some names. So I'll name this point right here A, this point right here will be named B, and then this point right here will be named C. And then over here, I'll name this point right here D, this point up here E, and then this point where we intersect with the circle F. Okay, nice. And then next up, I'll create some triangles out of these points. And so that'll be triangle ABC and triangle DEF. So let's draw those in here. So we've got triangle ABC. So notice that shares this yellow line. And then triangle DE and then F. Okay. So there are my two triangles. And now notice that upon creating those two triangles, I've also created something called a cyclic quadrilateral. And a cyclic polygon is a polygon that's inscribed in a circle. So a cyclic quadrilateral will be a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. And the quadrilateral that I've made is B, D, F, C. So let's write that down. So quadrilateral, B, D, F, C is cyclic. And then there's a really important fact about cyclic quadrilaterals, and that is opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's use that. So that tells us that angle A, C, F, so let's write that angle A, C, F, plus the opposite angle, which is ADF, so angle ADF equals 180. And then furthermore, we can do that for the other opposite angles as well. So let's see, angle CAB, so angle CAB, plus the one opposite it, so that would be DFC or CFD, so plus angle CFD equals 180. And now we'd like to use those along with some other things that are kind of obviously happening in our picture to show that some angles are congruent and eventually get that these two triangles that we've created are similar. So let's maybe start with this angle ACF and we'll decompose it. So let's notice that we can decompose it as 90 plus the angle measurement of ACB. So let's talk our way through that. So here we have ACF, but notice ACB is a portion of this angle, and then this right angle is the other portion of that angle. So that explains this sum here. And then we'll do the same kind of thing for ADF. So let's see what that will give us. So this will give us 90 minus the angle measurement of EDF. So EDF, and then we still have this minus, equals 180 on the other side. So let's talk our way through that. So we have ADF. Well, let's notice that that cuts through this right angle, and it cuts through this right angle by the angle FDE, or we called it EDF. So that explains that difference equation. But next up, we can notice that this 90 and 90 add up to 180, so those cancel. And then we can rearrange this to get angle measure ACB is the same thing as angle measure EDF. So let's put a box around that and save it. 
and then maybe we'll draw that in our picture here. So A, C, B, so that would be this angle right here, has the same thing as E, D, F, so that's this angle right here. So that's a bit hard to see, but it's that angle. So now let's do a similar type of calculation over here with C, A, B, and C, D, F. So here we'll just bring angle measure C, A, B down and then we will expand angle CFD as follows. So let's notice that CFD is 180 minus EFD because CE is a straight line. So let's write that down. So we've got 180 minus EFD. So angle measure EFD, so equals 180. But again, the 180s can cancel and we're left with angle measure CAB is equal to angle measure EFD. So let's maybe box that as well. So we'll box that in red. And then note that that gives us this angle right here, EFD is congruent to CAB. So that one right there. And then since the sum of the angles of a triangle equals 180, then we immediately get that this angle right here is the same thing as this angle right here. So FED and ABC. But then putting that all together by the angle, angle, angle formula, we know that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, so that's a good first like fact to work with. And so let's maybe bring that to the top and then we'll finish it off. So far we've shown that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF in this picture. Now let's notice we have these two side lengths, A to B and B, C for triangle A, B, C. We only have this side length right here for E, D. So the one corresponding to the number one that we are missing over here is this little bit right here, F, E. So maybe let's call that X. And while we're calling that X, we'll call the remainder of this distance here, CF, we'll call that Y just for later. Okay, but now we can apply rules about similar triangles. So we have the same proportions of the correct side lengths, and that'll give us the proportion three over one is the same thing as two over X, but that tells us that X is the same thing as two over three. Okay, so that's good. And then where can we go from here? So now we're going to use something called the power of the point theorem. So let's see, by, like I said, power of the point, and this is going to be applied to the point E, we know that x times x plus y, so let's write that down, x times x plus y is the same thing as 2 times 2, which is 4 here. But we know what x is, it's 2 thirds, so that leaves us a really easy equation to solve for y. So we have 2 thirds, and then y plus 2 thirds is equal to 4. And so let's see, that gives us y plus 2 thirds is equal to 12 divided by 2, which is 6. And so that means that y is is equal to 6 minus 2 thirds, which is 16 over 3, like that. But in fact, maybe the most important thing here is not that x is equal to 2 thirds and y is equal to 16 over 3, but it's the whole of c to e is equal to the number six. So that's gonna be a pretty important measurement. And now we'll finish this off by measuring the distance from B to E two ways with two different right triangles. Okay, so let's maybe put B to E in here so we have it. So there's that right there. Notice that gives us this right triangle B, D, E, D, like that. And then it also gives us this right triangle involving this, which is B, C, E. And we know the length of each of those. Well, we don't know the length of this, but we know it's exactly two times the radius minus one because no, we know this is a, a um, diag 
because we know this is a diameter. So applying a Pythagorean theorem to B, D, E will give us the following equation. So we have 2R minus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4, is equal to the length of line segment B, E squared. And then applying the same Pythagorean theorem to triangle B, C, E will give us 3 squared plus 6 squared equals B, E squared. So I'll just leave B, E squared equals 3 squared, which is 9, plus 6 squared, which is 36. But now we've got a nice quadratic formula that we can solve for R. So let's maybe get to that. So here this will give us 4R squared minus 4R plus 1 plus 4 is 5 equals, so let's see, 9 plus 36 is exactly 45. Now we can move this 45 over and that'll give us 4R squared minus 4R minus 40 equals 0. We can in fact factor a 4 out of that, leaving us with R squared minus R minus 10 equals 0. And then from there we can apply the Pythagorean, or sorry, the quadratic formula. So that'll give us R equals, so negative B, that'll be 1, plus or minus, but we're just going to use the plus because the minus will give us something less than 0, and that doesn't make sense for a radius. Then we have B squared. So let's see, b squared is 1 squared minus 4ac, so that'll be 41 all over 2. Great, and that's it. That's the final value for the radius of this circle, and that's a good place to stop.